everybody. We're so people in the room. Welcome. Happy Monday. Hello, Sharonica. Good morning. We okay. had about 50 signed up, but I it's kind of slowing okay, down. Okay, I'll get started. It's nine o'clock. Oh, good morning, everybody joining us today. Um, this is our regular um, Zoom with the superintendent call. Um, just an opportunity for you to engage and interact. Any questions that you have. Um, we have sent out a lot of information over the last um, few weeks and we just want to stay connected, committed to having these calls um, periodically and we'll continue to do so even as we start school. Um, don't expect you to jump on we want to make this opportunity available. Um, you will begin to hear from your buildings, so if you haven't already, so our buildings are starting to send out communication, and as I shared in my last communication on um, Friday, you will get detailed information regarding finalizing the registration process, no matter um, you know so what option you selected, as well as information regarding many celebratory events that are going to be happening at your end. So we're excited to uh, welcome your children back, even though we're in a virtual environment, but um, feel that this is still the best thing for us to do. Um, we are still creeping in cases. Our positivity rate in Missouri is 11%, which is very, very high. And so um, this one of the tricks may look at as we think about when we return um, but the positivity rate basically is the percentage of people who are, the number of people who are tested, the percentage of people who are um, positive. So that is a pretty significant rate. So um, we do need to minimize, you know, exposures, keep encouraging families um, to be mindful of the activities that you're engaged in at home. Um, try not to travel, particularly to areas where they're considered a hot spot, even though now we are technically considered one of those locations as well. So just try to stay close to your family, close to your um, your, your community base, um, hand washing, wearing masks. Um, those are all things that I think we can do as a community to try to get our kids back to school. So that's really um, all I have as an intro. Um, like I said, I know we shared a lot of information. Um, we will be helping you unpack information. And I know it's done. Um, our principals are on board to help you if, to answer questions. I'm certainly available to answer questions, but we want to ease into this, this school year and really be respectful and mindful of the uh, current state that we're in. Um, I don't want to paint a, a picture, but the reality is um, I don't anticipate us being back in full person 100% this school year. And less drastic, just I always commit to being transparent with you, always commit to being very forthcoming. But the way that we're seeing the data trending, uh, now that we're seeing uh, cases with children increasing as children are being brought back to school, um, we have to be conscious of that. So, so we want to be good stewards, you know, and be good stewards of our resources and also educate your children well and keep them safe. So that's my intro. Um, we're hope maybe things will will turn in Missouri, which we're hopeful for, and we can start that hybrid soon, and then eventually engage in um, full person. But that's where we are. So I'll stop rambling um, and answer any questions you have. But thank you for joining us this morning. And if you have questions, this isn't a webinar because we had a smaller group. Um, so really, you can ask me your questions. We have a small group. You can put them in that, um, or you can just ask me your questions. So okay. whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, this is John Tyler from John Tyler's mom. I'm sure you know that. Yes, um, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, okay, my question, okay, I got the, the emails about, you know, the school supplies and so on and so forth. Um, when will the children actually receive, like, their virtual schedule? and how that's gonna, um, you know, how that's gonna take place. I'm gonna be brutally honest, Ms. Thorpe, we had to make some quick adjustments based on the number of people who wanted the um, the brick option with UC teachers. So mm -hmm. our mini team quickly, 
Yeah, they quickly work to put some things in place. So we are finalizing those um, and now have a hard date of tomorrow of when parents must choose an option. So we will be able to get that information to our building so they work on class assignments. Um, and then you should be hearing very soon, actually probably this week, from your building um, regarding who your child's teacher will be um, getting schools. Um, and there are several events that will be happening to re welcome children back at the elementary school starting next week. The middle school has two evenings on um, the 12th and the 13th for families. So you'll be hearing more information from your building soon. We also will be sharing um, information regarding technology if you need something prepared or if you are a new student and you need that information. Okay, and um, if, initially on the last um, Zoom call, you know, if we didn't sign up for the click, then then they will uh, you will automatically assume you need to work. So does that change, or do I need to go back and register him from 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 that? Everyone needs to complete the registration process, what academy you pick. Okay. But if you did not hit click, you are automatically enrolled in break. So this week, hopefully by tomorrow, um, you will have detailed information regarding how to finalize your registration, um, what is coming, um, any potential dates for your building. So that is on the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, so, so I definitely still need to go online and, and and like technically register him. This K-12. Okay. All right. Any questions? Hi, this is Lauren DeSantis Um, I have a incoming kindergarten and I was looking at a proposed virtual schedule and I was just curious, um, does it look like Wednesdays? Or the day that um, was kind of off. I didn't know if we should still plan on the kids having like assignments and stuff on that Wednesday, where we just try and um, plan for support for what my daughter's going to need. Like if we need to have some help with at school. So um, I know the elementary schools are planning um, the day in the life of an elementary student. That is tomorrow. They're going to be tomorrow regarding those schedules. Wednesday is the day that we have dedicated for professional learning for teachers. Also, for another reason for that Wednesday is that we can do deep cleaning in between our cohorts once we're back in person. The will be will be distance learning activities that you can engage in with your child. Um, there will be suggestions from your classroom teacher on ways that you can um, going to be, you know, in a virtual environment, particularly for a kindergartner, there's going to be some parental support. Um, it's definitely will need more assistance. So I'm um, planning on giving your child more support, but our goal is to have resources available for you that you can affect navigate resources, navigate suggested activities so that um, he or she can definitely be engaged. Okay, oh, thanks. And I know that we've heard a lot about, you know, kindergarten, back to kindergarten. There will be kindergarten, meet the teachers. So that uh, this is kind of scary for those families who are bringing in a kindergartner, particularly those who have a, a youngster that's entering school the first time. So our teachers are anxious to celebrate them and welcome them back. So I promise that you will hear from your building principal about what those will look like. I do know they are good for the team and I think that the elementary schools are going with August 20th. So um, please expect more. Um, I, I'm almost certain that they, we are, that they would have them on the same day. And so they're doing some celebratory things. They want you to be excited. They want to give your children some ease. Um, principal uh, 
having chores. So they're, they're busy planning for school too. But if you just want to get inside and you haven't seen the building, sure that we have you a quick tour, um, not a long one, but a quick tour so that they can manage their time. But we do want to get our parents who are transitioning um, of that ease that, you know, we're going to welcome your babies and, and love on them as best we can. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question. Um, beginning of the whole pandemic or with school starting, we had chosen the click for my son, who's going to be seventh grade of the middle school. So now that um, we're having the brick blended option of um, virtual for the entire school year, that's the more that's the option that we're going to go with now. What is the curriculum that's going to be used? for the middle school students so, since click is used the um launch, since click is using launch what is the curriculum that we're using for our students it will be a mix at the middle school level for um, some courses will, will be launched but the majority of the courses will be the curriculum um, so our curriculum is aligned to missouri learning standards i don't know if i have someone from cni on the call this morning um, but resources are very depending on what content area that is being used. I do know that the middle school um, has another uh, orientation session coming up this week. I believe it is for sixth graders, but we will put in the middle school administrators contact information so that uh, they can get back to you and give you specifics on the curricular resources that we use per content area. Thank you. For them mm -hmm. to respond back to me, do I need to leave an email address, or will they respond to the um, to the to the whole for for all here so that they'll know as well what curriculum that they'll be using? They have. They've had a. They just had a um a meeting last week. Many I forgot how to run their call. It was over a hundred. So they will be overly communicating to everyone, and they have already. I don't want to rattle them off because some new so I want to be sure that you get the 100% accurate information. So they are more than happy to follow right up with you. So Kate, uh, one of our assistant principals, her email is in the chat. So you can email Kate directly. Okay, great. Thank you. Because I was on that call for the middle school um, parents. They did not, they weren't able to answer the question of what type of curriculum that we'll be using for the middle school students. Oh, that's interesting. So with you. Okay, great. Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. And if you want to um, just email me too, so I'll have your information. I have a resources, for example, we use Envisions for math. Um, we use Lucy Calkins for reading and writing. Um, our EIA literature curriculum involves novels, and we're trying to integrate it with social studies aligned to the social study standards. So I'm not uh, evading the question. It's just a lot of nuance with recent it honestly is depending on what course your child is in. Um, we have some courses that will actually be taking as a so it's kind of a matrix. So it's best if we know specifics and um, can follow up with you directly with the expert do it today. Thank you on them blow up. Not a problem. Thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. We have a question in the the chat, Veronica. Haley. You think I'm not in okay. the chat. Hello, everyone. New to the district. I may have missed if this was asked, but when should we expect to receive instruction and details on the uh, details and schedules for launch be distributed? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so um, the launch deadline is tomorrow. So we get that on parents will receive information from launch as well as from the district. Our goal is to make sure that there are connections um, between both the day and uh, and to be brutally honest um, launch wasn't expecting as many parents to select that option either so they're they're scrambling to hire teachers so i did hear early on that option for, with the exception of high school right now is for the for the first quarter only it will not be for the full semester for the high school you can expect to receive um, your um, schedules 
immediately after we close the registration, which is tomorrow, get that information on and we collaboration with them to communicate with our family. So this week. You have <laughs> any other questions? Yeah. So heard a lot of this question is is to clarify for families choosing brick can students remain in distance learning in school abilities absolutely that is the the change that I said we had to make uh, we were not expecting um, parents that want weren't that they didn't want their children to come to school that number was much larger than we anticipated so um, we have worked to adjust and our staff will need to make those adjustments. So we never want to tell a parent you have to come to school. We're working with our state department. Um, we're being um, again saying they never open school like this. So there's a lot of nuances that we just don't know. But we are committed to making sure we adhere to our guiding principle, our plan, which is that it is safe first and foremost. It is gradual and it is kind. And so we will work with our families. Um, so you do want to look at our teachers. This is the learning shift for them. Um, so we had planned on having dedicated teachers teaching virtual. We didn't have interest. So we'll be working with our staff are up to speed. Our principals have been engaged in learning on what to look for around virtual learning best practice so that we can consider virtual that virtual uh, dynamic for the duration of the year or as long as parents want it. Um, we know that the flu season is a horizon. I will be like a record player and repeating myself. Um, be mindful of what you're doing. Be mindful of that age and have a small community in your city. And so whatever you're doing at home impacts our ability to come back to school. Whatever you're doing in the community impacts your ability. And it's us being together. So when I go out and I see people in neighborhoods and they're gathering and there are no masks, it just causes me anxiety. Fortunately, I'm not seeing that in our community, but um, if I see a parent or a family that I know, I have no problem saying, where's your mask? Because <laughs> it really helps us all, you know, be safe. And so we, we want to get back to, to school. We want to be safe and, and love that that works. Thank you for doing. Um, our students had a, a protest last Sunday, yesterday, actually. Everyone wore a mask. Um, it was a requirement. Everyone participated. It was safe. It was organized, led by our students again. But um, that's an example of a gathering, you know, and gather as long as we're doing the thing. Um, Having an incoming eighth grader, what is the process will be? That will be we take transition to next location, such as high school and further. So the high school is planning a um, a session for the ninth graders to meet teachers and that as well. If you recall, they were planning to have them in person every day um, to really get them on board. It that's going to happen right now. But they were really going to be all three counselors to make sure that that transition is seamless. We have um, a great uh, one of our dean of students. High school is Dr. Mark, university alum. Um, he really works with the freshmen and he does an amazing job of uh, really educating them and their parents. Our high school progression. We also have a strong um, kind of career pathway resource, scholar path, learn not track students, but it helps students explore potential passions, you know, the things that they may want to explore. So that as think about high school and they want to go into math and science field, they probably need to take math and science for four years. If they want to go into, you know, a career based field, we have many partnerships and internships for them to explore those. So those are resources that you will be introduced to. And your principal, Mr. Peoples, and work to support our freshmen specifically. That is a group that we know we need to, to support more. Um, so you will hear much more from that school. When school reopens, what kind of a transition do you expect for kids who are 
remain virtual. Do you anticipate schedule change any other changes? Um, there was one question about the where can you find the brick registration link? Registration link for brick. you did not um, submit to be in the Click Academy. You will automatically be in the Brick Academy. However, free university families enroll and register. So that information is coming out no matter what option you pick. There's some processes that you have to complete in K-12. So you have information for the next couple days for me, regardless of what option you select. Thanks. I had, um, I had messaged her. Um, and I'm reading it. I have Kelly. Um, when it opens, what kind of transition do you expect for kids who remain virtual? Do you anticipate any? So, um, go back at the consistency. There's so much inconsistency, so we want to provide stability. Um, right now, today, um, I can say that a lot of depends on once we get those final numbers, once we solidify where teachers are going to be assigned. But staying is we teachers are there, they're ready. We had about 30 new employees, not just teachers, but district staff that were in orientation. We are amazing. You're excitable, did a phenomenal job of hiring some dynamic people. So they're anxious to start. Um, so right now, we feel that our LP staff is solid. Uh, our hope is that that maintains, which is one of the reasons why, again, we were looking at a virtual environment. What we're seeing with schools that are opening open for the day, and then there's a closure. Maybe it's a classroom closure. Maybe it's a building closure. But there are cases that come up and want to go to help. And I'm, I'm very transparent. We've had cases in um, U City with our administrative staff. Manuals, they're contained. It is inevitable. It's not if coronavirus, if we have a case. It is what do we do when we have it. So our procedures that we have in place, we feel very solid and we be able to make it and address it um, effectively. So we hope that your children will be with their teacher for the duration. We hope there is no change. Um, our goal would be to get consistency with the schedules. I want to say again, we have never opened school this way. If we implement the schedule and we, it is just not working, our principals, our teachers, I'm sure you will tell us, we will have to make adjustments. So our plan, our fluid plan is always um, in a mode of being improved. We don't want to say this is final and we're not going to change it. We have to be able to just on feedback and honestly based on impact and based on results. So our goal is to maintain your staffing so that children have consistency um, that is Any questions in that? Are there any other questions or comments? This is a really dumb question, but as far as the school supply list, I mean, how, how many, um, like, uh, what? Like, when we would go to school, we'd have, like, you need seven, seven notebooks and so on and so on. Just trying to just prepare. I mean, should I, we do it just typically like the normal um, normal school year. It will supplies even virtual. We sent out the supply list because I was getting a number of emails from parents because of tax free weekend. One list. I want to be very clear. Um, I don't want parents running out scrambling trying to get supplies. We always provide what students don't have. We already are by drive. You're gonna be getting goodies next week when you come into your buildings, you know, for they're gonna do some drive by things. So um, but those things that we suggested just the supplies that we do feel will be helpful in the at home environment to help keep your um, your organized honestly help keep you organized. I think that um, you know we also are gonna be doing a a, a a cafe on I do a home I have this having dedicated materials. If they're sharing your work supplies, that's probably not a best practice. So they need their own dedicated things, their own 
educated patient system so they can stay organized and also help you stay organized. Day 12 and the same thing, and I use them interchangeably. Sorry about that. We have too many acronyms in education, but they're the exact same thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have another question. Yes. I know during the meeting with um, the middle parents, someone had asked about the EBT um, the EBT card that was given for parents for the summer. Will that be continued since the children will be virtually at home? So the EBT program is a state level program. They're not administered. So um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, they are managing that. Um, that website, you can put in the chat, is www.desi.mo.gov, and they will be able to answer those questions. Um, we have no information that uh, it exists, and the contact people are des at DESI. We are continuing our video program. Um, we are looking at ways to continue dinner. Um, right now, it, it is probably going to be this much school back. Um, the dinner program was an emergency measure that was put in place. Why they are changing, I don't know. I um, have the, to continue with the, the dinner, the supper program, but we will be um, providing our meals. Um, right for the duration, so we won't stop um, providing meals. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the question about power of synchronous and asynchronous learning for elementary through high school, um, pretty much based on the schedule, um, the goal is not to replicate the spring. We knew that we had a lot of variation. Some buildings rotted, um, teachers overextended. Um, in some areas, for a lot of reasons, the, the quality or the level of engagement varies. Um, we want to kind of even that, that playing field. We want to make it more consistent. So the way the schedule is built, it is a traditional day. And we are getting a lot of feedback from parents about that. So we are exploring ways to provide some support outside of that traditional day. We don't want that look yet. We're being very creative to think about how we can support that. So most of the synchronous learning is within the AM. The path and the intent is to have the asynchronous learning happen in the afternoon with some special such as music and e, socially learning edit, maybe some counseling support, library support. That is the way the, the structure is designed. Um, so today's type of a student cafes would be very helpful. We have them scheduled at every level, elementary, middle, and high. Um, so you can see the day for each in the chat. Um, I know the elementary is tomorrow, um, and so that one is um, led elementary principal, middle school, and by the middle school principal team, and then high school, of course, by Mr. Peoples and his team. So you can see what that day looks like at granular level questions. I'm going to say it again. This is our first time doing this, and so we know it looks like paper. It's a man paper. They've done a phenomenal job on paper. Once we start to implement it, if we need to make pivots or tweaks, we promise we will. Um, who should we contact for a tour? Um, just start with me, and then based on your, um, I will like you building leader. I'm S. Harden at ucbschools.org. I also receive all of the communications at ucbschools.org email. Um, just me directly.
So great question. The question is around the, the cohorts with Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, yes, we do have in there. Um, and um, right now, the, the schedule is to stick with the Monday, Tuesday. We've looked at the holidays. The one holiday that we have um, in Labor Day, and then we have one in, um, in January. So we're processing if we need to make an adjustment to schedule for that calendar. That um, cohorts will be simulated now. We can do a simulation in our data system to determine um, what cohorts will be in, what students will be in each cohort. So we have already started to receive requests from parents to the same cohort with other families. Um, so we anticipated that. So ideally, I would say by next week, we should be able to share with our building principal um, cohort your child will be assigned in. Principals will make some adjustments just based on student need, um, dynamics, have a heterogeneous group of families attending on certain days. The, the primary indicator is family cohorts. And um, so you plan anticipate what days your child may be in school. Uh, right now, like I said, the only Monday that we have is Labor Day this semester, um, and we have a couple in in the fall semester, in the spring semester, that would be impacted. But more to come on if we need just days. Um, the Wash U, and just for everyone who may not be familiar with this chat, elementary day is tomorrow at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The middle school cafe is at, um, uh, on the August 17th at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And the, uh, pre-K cafe is also at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The high school is having one, um, cafe only. They've had several meetings with their parents. So theirs is at 5 p.m. on the 19th. So Washington is a resource that came to us um, and it is free of charge. Um, do you have limited number of people that they can serve? So they did send that to us and we sent that out. We are looking at other ways to provide green and um, trying to find ways to organize people. A lot of people want to help and volunteer. We just have to structure that and again, look at a verbal option to keep safe. If you are interested in supporting with tutoring or any other supports for our district, we do have an association that um, is thinking about ways they can support. You can email me and I can put you in contact with the association. Or if you have suggestions on things that we write, we know that we're learning a lot from parents who have experienced things or may have relatives that work in other states, have opened already. We've gotten a lot of suggestions them. So send us your suggestions. We are always open um, to hearing what other people are doing. That's thinking. Any other questions? the deadline to withdraw from the Click Academy is tomorrow. Um, and, you know, we, we need information for state. Um, and if you need more conversation to, to try to make a better decision, if you're an existing student, have a house district, just you talk to your principal. But we really need to land. We have to submit that information to launch. They uh, analyze their staff based on numbers, once we finalize things, um, we're, we're gonna be, we're gonna be pretty much locked in financially, as well as with that thing. So um, next week, if you have not submitted the final step, we will assume you're in the Brick Academy. If you have completed the final step, we will assume you're in the Click Academy. 
So you will, so definitely we will you'll we will be um registration for the enrollment school. Say that one more time. So we will definitely receive an email or a link to the John do the rather than click. Um so I just want to make sure because you won't get a link if you want brick. The, the link that went out was for please who had recommended click. They got that link last week. Okay. So um, if you did not select click as an option to read that email, child is likely in brick. The only thing that you would need to do is complete the general registration information. Okay. And will we receive link for that? Or yes. It's, it's, it's the Sis K 12 system, but we will resend that link. <laughs> For the cohorts, um, right now I have been getting those emails. So in the communication that go out for registration information, that we will also have detailed information regarding um, the cohort okay. request. Okay. And I will say that we can accommodate all of them. I'll put that up. Um, we will best um, to work with families, but we're not going to be able to accommodate a thousand family requests for cohorts. Okay. Fine. What percent of students signed up for brick versus click? Um, I don't have the numbers to date. Um, I want to say I had about 470 families that had signed up for click, which is significant. So in building it was all 20 percent of their population. So parents have been all weekend sending emails to change. I've, I've gotten several this morning. So as of tomorrow, have a final number of uh, families that are choosing the click. I don't understand the, the question. We've had several conversations with families because there was confusion um, that clarified and are continuing to clarify. So our next um, Zoom is at five today, um, same format. Oh, how would I serve a family who has a student in tech that has chosen up? They, um, this is a staff question. So um, the, the students who are in CLIC are not eligible for tech. And it's have been overly communicated regarding that. They will not be able to receive tech services. For Cohort, um, the same uh, cohort, that information will be coming out either today or tomorrow with that process who you need to contact for to record the same cohort. Any other questions? Okay, well, we will, thank you. <laughs> we will stay the course. Um, elementary parents, please tune in. The uh, day in the life of a student, uh, parent cafe, um, middle school, high school, yours is forthcoming. Um, next is um, today at five. Um, I will continue this format. And, you know, it's nice that we have new fans on today. Um, so, and I think the more that people have accurate information, even though it is changing, it helps us um, to stay on the page and full in seamless fashion. So thank you for your time this morning. Um, I'm excited again about the year. 
we and we understand that we can't do what we do without you. So thank you, parents, for what you're doing at home with our children. Um, this is we're gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this together. Thanks, everyone. Bye.